Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in this video I'm going to share with you five tips to build your custom agent in Copilot Studio. Because I have been building these agents even when it was still called as bot back in Power Virtual Agent days. And I've noticed this consistency in the planning when it comes to building these agents. And that is why I put this video together just for you. In addition, in this video, you will actually see this little diagram that I have. It shows a path that you need to follow. And you can go ahead and download that diagram just for you. The link is there in the description below. Make it available either for yourself or the team that is actually building these agents. So stick around. This is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. These are the five tips I'm sharing with you to build your custom agents in Copilot Studio. And the very first one I want to talk about is to decide if this is going to be an internal or an external agent. This is a decision that you need to make upfront because based on it, you will decide, hey, is this going to be something internally in your Teams or say Microsoft 365 Copilot chat or is it external? And when I say external, literally on your company website where end users or the public can actually have the conversation with that agent. And this, in my opinion, is one of the most important decisions you have to make upfront because several other additional configurations need to be made if this is the route that you're going to go through. And let me show you why. So I have two agents to show you. The first one is going to be shared internally inside your Microsoft Teams, but then the second one over here is going to be shared publicly. That is on your company website. And so you see for the first one, the authentication is very simple. You literally have this radio button selected and that's it. After that, this can be shared in your Microsoft Teams or in your internal SharePoint and the authentication takes care of itself. However, the second option, this is where it's going to be shared externally. And even on the external, you have two options. It's going to be literally no authentication. And there's other some sub steps planning over there because where is your data sitting? What's the permissions? All of that is dependent on it. So that's the first one is no authentication. And then the second one is authenticate manually where the agent can go ahead and have discussions with you externally on a public website. However, moment you need more internal type of information, in that case, an authentication step needs to be done. And this is where the authenticate manually configuration needs to be done. And all of the stuff that you're seeing over here, it's back end configuration needs to be done all on Microsoft Azure, where you have to go ahead and do an app registration and then go and get some very important information about your secrets and authentication, API configuration, all of that needs to be done in the back end. And so this, once again, in my opinion, is one of the first things that you need to do because additional steps like these need to be done upfront. Tip number two is have dedicated environments. And as far as how many environments you need, that's a decision that you will have to make also based on the importance of this agent. Uh, my recommendation, at least minimum have two, which is a prod and a non-prod. But if you can, go ahead and have all three because we will have dev, uh, test, or also called as QA, and then production. Dev is where the developers actually make the stuff, uh, but then test is where only testing is done. Over there, you're not building anything, you're purely testing it. And then production is absolutely no touch type of an environment. So go ahead and have these dedicated environments built up front. But in addition to that, you also have a few other things to do because it's not just the environments. It is which data policy is being applied to this environment because based on the solution that you're building, you might need to touch other data which has its own connectors. Those connectors need to be certified, approved, in your data policy, stuff like that. So you will have to get that approved. And finally, you need to have security groups prepared for these environments. Minimum would be at least two for the non-production and the production, but the security groups need to be there prepared before even the environments can be created. So I classify all of these into a tip number two, that is to go ahead and create your dedicated environments and get all of these prerequisites done. Tip number three is message consumption. Here, have an educated guess as far as the messages that are going to be consumed uh, for your agent. And always keep in mind is that the production one will be always higher than the non-production. So you could even come up with the percentage model where if your production is 100%, then your non-production could be say 10% or 20%. And you'll be surprised at how good an educated guess you can make for all the message consumption because you have a good idea of the conversations that people are gonna have with your agent, the questions they're gonna have, 
how long those conversations are going to go and then you can do a good running count of these messages and therefore make a good educated guess of these message consumptions. And if you're not 100% sure, when you go ahead and release this on a trial basis to just a few people, that is where you will get those exact numbers and always add a little extra percentage as a buffer. So let me show you where you configure this in the back end. So I recommend that such configuration be done by our Power Platform admin, who is actually assigned the Power Platform admin role. And once that is taken care of, you come to the Power Platform admin center, also commonly known as PPAC. And then in licensing, you go to Copilot, and right over here, you see the prepaid capacity. This capacity actually shows the messages capacity or the amount that you have given for the consumption. Now it depends on how you have the licensing configured on your side you might have actually purchased some Copilot agent licenses and therefore those have come with 25,000 messages or you can even go with pay as you go. It just depends on what your company is done for. However, when you come and click on manage capacity, this is where you assign that at an environment level. In your case, it is going to be a certain amount for the production and then another certain amount for the non-production. So say in my case, this is the dev, so that's the non-production one. So here I can go and say that, hey, for my non-production, I just need a thousand messages and that's what I've gone ahead and allocated. And as far as the capacity coverage is, I have checkboxed the option to draw from the available capacity in my tenant. However, on the production one, you can go ahead and bump that up. So in my dev, I have a thousand over here. I can go ahead and bump, bump that up to 10,000. In addition, if you think that that 25,000 messages that you have, which is your max, if that is not enough, you can also go ahead and set up the pay as you go. So over here in my build to pay as you go billing plan, I've already gone ahead and set up the subscription so I can go and select that and I can even keep that box checked. This way I know that if I've already consumed my Copilot Studio license, I'm fine. The pay as you go will kick in. So this is the configuration that you do for your message consumption in the Power Platform Admin Center. Number four is make it solutions based. I'm specifically talking about taking all your agents, connectors, and everything else into this one solution. And in case you're not familiar what solutions is, it is a very enhanced form of basically just a folder, uh, but in Power Platform, we call that as solutions. Now, when you are going and creating an agent, by default, it will already be in a solution. However, it will be in a default solution. My recommendation to you is actually create your own custom solution upfront and over there, go ahead and put everything in, your agents, your connectors, all of that. In fact, if you're building a multi-agent type of a Copilot Studio solution, then make sure all of those agents are in the same environment and they are part of solutions as well. Now, there are certain other tips I can share with you over here. Um, depending on the size of this agent that you're building, it can be multiple solutions. One solution could be just for your agents. The other solution could be for all your connectors and connection references. Another one, the third one, could be for all your data sources. So that way you can spread out these solutions as well. Just make sure they are in the same environments. So let me show you how to configure that in the back end. So I'm here in Copilot Studio and I'm gonna select my plus new agent option. However, on the top right where the ellipses are, go ahead and select that and click on edit advanced settings. Here is where you will actually see the solution. So common data services default solution is, as the name says, the default solution where your agent is automatically created. However, you can always click on the drop down and select your own solution. So as you've already guessed, you need to actually create that custom solution upfront. So for that, you basically come into either your Power Apps or your Power Automate, click on solutions, then click on the plus new solution option and start creating your custom solution. Give it the display name, the name, the publisher, make sure that it remains as an unmanaged solution when you're just building it. But this is where you do it. Again, keep in mind, it needs to be in the exact same environment. And once you've got the solution created, you come back into your Copilot Studio, making sure you're in the correct environment, and then go back into the advanced settings and select it from the dropdown. Therefore, moving forward, every work that you put in in that agent will be stored in that custom solution, which makes all future migrations so much more easier. And finally, tip number five is reporting. Now, this tip applies once your agent has gone live and there has been some utilization and public activity on that. Now you wanna know how successfully these agents are working. And for that, you can use the reporting functionality which is provided. 
Now there's three different types of reporting functionalities available. So let me show you all of them. The first one is down to the agent level. So in my scenario, I have this agent. And when I go as the maker of this agent into Copilot Studio, in the analytics section, I have reporting for anywhere from the last seven days all the way up to the last 90 days. And I can go and see how the effectiveness is, usage, satisfaction, so on and so forth. This is down at the agent level. However, say if you are an admin, admin of an environment or the entire Power Platform, then for that, the center of excellence tool is the ideal place because over there, it already has two reports. One of them is the overview of co-pilots. It will give you an overview of all the agents that you have running in your tenant. And then you can also drill down to the agent level. So here you can go and get a list of all the agents, which environment it is, who's the maker, uh, when was it created, just go ahead and get nice drill down level. But there's also a third reporting option that you must consider, and that is the Copilot Studio Kit. I've actually done a whole video on that. You can take a look at that in the link below, but I'll just give you an overview. Um, in over here, I have my agents, and when I go and click on each of these agents, I get a good description of all the metadata that is tied to this agent. But what really captures my attention is this dashboard and the details. The dashboard gives me an overall conversation API down to the agent level. See, this is something we do not get in the center of excellence. But over here, down to the agent level, I can go ahead and see all the conversations that have happened and even important stats like this. But we can even go one level deeper. If I go into the details, I go ahead and select some of the conversations that have happened. So if I scroll down over here, this one, there were 26 turns, which means a conversation went back and forth between the agent and the user 26 times. So if I just go ahead and double click on it and go to the transcript over here, I can see a side by side. I can see a side by side comparison of all the backend data and the actual conversation as it happened. This is pretty neat for multiple levels, both as the agent maker and on the administrative side. And therefore, in my opinion, it is important to have all three of these reports at the agent level, all the way up to the Copilot Studio to really give you a good overview of how your agent is performing. So if this is the very first video you are watching in my channel, then you'll be happy to know that several of these tips I just mentioned have actually drilled down into them. And you can find links to all of those videos down in the description below. And hopefully this video will be useful to you because now you have a path to come up with a structured plan for the next agent that you're gonna build in Copilot Studio. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.